Hello, everybody. My name is Chris Zenick, um, and I've worked uh, with the um, the BESS uh, over the past few years, and have worked with each of the uh, platforms uh, that the BESS is available on. Today, that's what we're going to be discussing: um, is um, the BESS uh, screener, which is part of the uh, BASC three. Uh, which is a comprehensive behavioral assessment tool, and we'll be I will be providing a brief overview. Uh, then um, we will look at the different platforms that the BES is available on: Ames Web Plus, Q Global, and Review 360. Um, and uh, I believe that uh, Laura will be doing uh, a demo of. Uh, the best administration on Q Global. Sydney will be doing a demo of the administration on Review 360, and um, Heather will be doing a demo of the best on Ames Web Plus. Okay. Before I start the presentation, I just want to ask everyone who's attending uh, if um, they screen for already screen for behavior. So if you could um, respond to this question, we can get an idea. All right. Got a lot of responses coming in about it's pretty pretty much down the down the line, um, 50-50. Um, more responses coming in. Let's see, just wait. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And as you can see, 51% of y'all said that you don't, and 49% of you say that you have screened or do screen for behavior. All right. Um, again, I'm going to provide a brief overview of the best. The BESS is part of a comprehensive um, behavioral assessment system called the BASC-3. Um, the BASC-3 is designed to provide uh, behavior solutions from screening to targeted assessment to interventions to progress monitoring. The BESS provides the screening component for the BASC-3. I mean, for the BASC-3, uh, the BESS can be used um, to provide baseline or benchmark screening and early identification for students at risk for emotional and behavioral issues. Uh, it can also assist in identify, early identification for referral for further assessment or for more individualized support for students. While there is a pro progress monitoring component of the BASC system, the BASC can also is a, is a shorter, simpler way of progress monitoring uh, within the BASC system. So while you can use the Flex Monitor for more comprehensive um, progress monitoring, the BASC can be used also to monitor the progress of students as well as the effectiveness of intervention. The best can be used within schools. It can be used um, for mental health and consulting uh, groups. It can be used within uh, community health and research settings. And it also can be used uh, by pediatric uh, practitioners. All right, the, the BESS is designed to quickly and efficiently assess behavioral and emotional um, risk in students and um, other children ages 3 through 18. Uh, it is a group-wide screening in schools, so it can be used at Tier 1. It's a general measure of functioning, and it um, can be used to indicate those students 
who may need further assessment. Um, and again, the BASC has those assessment tools. They have a teacher, parent, and student rating forms that provide more comprehensive assessments of student behavior. The components of the BASC include a manual, record forms, hand score worksheets for paper administration only, Q Global administration, scoring and reporting for Q Global users, Review 360 administration scoring reporting for Review 360 users, and Ames Web Plus administration and scoring and reporting for Ames Web Plus users. The administration and scoring of the best is straightforward and a variety of educational professionals and paraprofessionals can give can can be uh, or can use the measure to screen their students. Again, it's not a comprehensive assessment of behavior. Instead, it provides more of an identification of those students who are at risk uh, for developing emotional behavioral problems. Some of the key features of the BAS are um, the form is brief, so it can be complete. It can be completed quickly. Um, there's no need for specialized training for to in order to administer. It provides an overall score as well as sub indexes. Those sub sub indexes are on the parent and teacher forms, external rating index, internal rating index, adaptive skills risk index, and on the student form, there's a internal risk index a self-regulation risk index, and a personal adjustment risk index. There's a Spanish language version of the parent and the, the student forms. And again, the administration, there's choices between paper and pencil or the digital options. There's group level reporting um, for the best, and that can be accessed within Review 360 and Ames Web Plus. And the normative sample, which was collected in 2015 um, and pub published in the manual, um, closely matches the U.S. population. Okay, there are three forms that are included in the BAS. There's a teacher form, a parent form, and a student form. The teacher form, there's a, and for each of those forms, the teacher and parent form, there are two separate forms. The teacher form, there's a preschool form, ages three through five. The, uh, there's also a child and adolescence form, uh, grades K through 12. Uh, for the parent form, there's a preschool school form and adolescent form as well. And the student form is just a child adolescent form that starts with students in grades three and goes through grade 12. Okay, there's several different options for the best administration and scoring. There's the paper and pencil option, which is best for very small groups. There's the Ames Web Administration Scoring Reporting, which is excellent for classroom administration, uh, individual and group analysis, uh, can be reported alongside uh, academic results, and is integrated with Review 360. The Q Global Administration and Scoring Reporting, which uh, provides more detailed individual score reports, and also multi-rater multi reports. And then Review 360, which is excellent for large groups and the universal screening at the building and district level. Um, you have individual and group level analysis, including um, student groups like by ethnicity and um, by gender. Um, they also include multiple rater reports, and uh, they also include a progress report. Regardless of the uh, administration or scoring methods used here, are the, the items remain the same in each of the platforms. Um, and here's an example of some of the items 
uh, that are included uh, on the BAS. The BAS provides uh, different scores that can be used and interpreted to help uh, provide information about students um, in terms of how much they are at risk for different types of um, emotional and behavioral issues. There's an overall behavioral and emotional risk index, and then also, again, on the parent and teacher forms, there's an externalizing um, risk index, an internalizing risk index, which focuses on some of those behaviors that are often missed in the classroom, internalizing behaviors, and also an adaptive skills risk index for the student form. There is a internalizing risk index, self-regulation uh, risk index, and a personal adjustment risk index. The most comprehensive method of gathering behavioral and emotional information on a group of students or adolescents is to use both the teacher and the parent forms when possible. Uh, and then for those students in grades three and above to also use the student form as well. More sources of information provide a better idea of the issues that the child is struggling or the challenges that the child is facing. Uh, when we're looking at it using the parent forms, you can assess, you could use forms with both the parents. Uh, if only one parent is available, it is um, best to use the parent who has the most opportunity to observe their child's behaviors. All right, in this next section, I'm going, or next several slides, I'm going to give a quick introduction to the platforms. Um, so first, what is QGlobal? QGlobal is Pearson's online scoring and administration system. For the BASC-3, BASC there are three administration methods. There's a manual on-screen administration, there is, and there is a remote on-screen um, screen administration. Um, the remote on-screen administration is, is that you may choose a teacher to, or a parent to um, use the form. You can email them the form. They'll have a link that they could uh, access and then fill out the form. Um, this, uh, the Q Global platform allows for both individual and group administration. Okay, Review 360 as well as being a platform, is also a comprehensive behavioral support system. Oops. Okay, hold on, I'm just lost my screen. I'm sorry, I'm having a tough, some technical difficulty. Okay, all right, I was able to pull the screen back up, sorry. Um, anyway, Review 360, uh, along with being a, um, a platform for administration, is also a uh, positive behavioral support uh, system uh, that provides expert coaching um, uh, for uh, interventions and strategies to help support students. It has a behavioral uh, data management system. It allows it to track um, incidents, behavioral incidents. And uh, it also has ways of uh, guiding and sustaining the, the systemic implementation of uh, positive behavioral support or multi-tiered behavioral support uh, programs. Um, as a platform, um, it provides uh, group administration and group reporting uh, for the best. Okay, and then Ames Web Plus uh, is a web-based data management system for academic skills. It includes benchmark screening and progress monitoring uh, assessment to be used uh, for students in grades pre-K through 12. 
uh, the BASC, BASC, is, is BASC 3 BASC is integrated into AIMS Web through Review 360 as an add-on feature, and it only includes the uh, teacher report, I mean the teacher form. Okay, this is a helpful matrix that looks at the different types of administrations and the different types of forms. You have your student, teacher, and parent forms, um, and then uh, the types of administration, um, a paper and pencil form, the online administration, remote online administration, um, different types of raters, um, group administration, and then a mobile administration. You'll use the, this type of matrix to determine which uh, platform would work best for your setting. So some of the questions that you ask in order to choose which platform to use is, is who is the user? Is the user a clinician, school administrator, teacher, or other personnel? Another question that you would ask is, are you already using one of these platforms? A lot of times it's easier to stick with the platform you currently use and understand. Um, then also you would ask, is there ability to integrate results with other classroom or individual measures? The ability to administer via group administration, if that's uh, something that you require. And then you would want to look at your reporting options. So if you want reports that could be aggregated by student group or by grade or give classroom reports, you would more likely want to use either the AIMSWeb or the Review360 platform versus the uh, Global platform, which focuses more on providing individualized comp uh, reports. All right, um, so before we move on to um, the demonstrations of Ames Web, um, Q Global and Review 360, I just wanted to ask you all if you um, use uh, any of these platforms already. All right, so here are the results. Um, of the people who responded, 74% uh, would use Q Global, uh, 31 Ames Web Plus, and then 16% Review 360. All right, um, since I've already gone over the forms, I just want to say real quick that the, uh, again, the best also can be filled out using the paper and pencil forms. Um, but in order to save time, since we've already looked at the different forms, I'm going to move on to uh, the demo portion of our presentation. Okay, so now I'd like to um, hand the presentation over to Laura, and she will be providing a uh, demo of um, a discussion and then demo of uh, using the best on Q Global. Thanks, Chris. Hello, everyone. My name is Laura Moreno. Let's take a look today at using Q Global to administer the BASC 3. We are going to start with a brief overview, like Chris said, and then we're going to take a look at how the BASC works in the Q Global through a live demonstration. So there are a variety of benefits to using the BASC on Q Global versus a pencil paper administration. One safeguard built into Q Global requires a response to be entered for each item negating the impact of omitted items, which may compromise the interpretability of scores. QGlobal also offers three different methods for using the parent and teacher forms, manual entry, on-screen administration, and remote on-screen administration. The student form can be completed either by manual entry or through on-screen administration. Here are some general terms using QGlobal. The examiner is going to be the individual who administers the assessment. The examinee refers to the individual who is being administered the assessment. A rater is the individual who fills out the rating scale. 
We use the term allocate when assigning inventory to an individual account or subaccount, and this inventory being assigned are either assets, subscriptions, or usages. Finally, the delivery method refers to how the assessment is administered, whether by manual entry, on-screen, or remote on-screen administration. There are two inventory types for reporting in QGlobal, usages and subscriptions. Usages allow a report to be generated from any of the three delivery methods and must be used to generate a report for the on-screen and remote on-screen administration methods. QGlobal can be used as the record form and the scoring program. Usages can be allocated to a user, an account, or a sub-account. Subscriptions are used to generate an unlimited number of reports when using the manual entry method. These subscriptions are available in one, three, and five-year intervals and are allocated to users on an account. So for example, if an account has 10 users who want to generate an unlimited number of reports through the BAS or report subscription, 10 subscriptions would be required. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at QGlobal. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you here. Okay, this is the sign in page for QGlobal located at QGlobal or qglobal.pearsonclinical.com. I'm going to log in here with my username and password. And now we can see the home screen. Across the top here we have some, uh, a toolbar which includes some helpful resources such as the help link here and the resource library. I am going to briefly show you here. You can find some information on the BASC-3 including test information and manuals if purchased. At the top left of the screen, I am going to select New Examinee. And here you will enter the examinee's name. An ID for the student. And this is assigned by your particular system or location. A gender, date of birth, and you can enter an email and comments if you like. And then select Save. Okay, I am going to um, Assign an assessment, and there are two ways to assign an assessment in QGlobal, on the home menu here or from the examinee's profile. I'm going to select the client and then assign new assessment. And this window lists all the assessments available to you in QGlobal. You can find the BASC-3 by either typing in here or by searching with the letters to the left, to the right of the search field. Select the student form and assign. An assessment details page is then shown to you, and that's going to provide you with three administration options, manual entry, and this is where you are going to administer the assessment on paper and then transfer the responses to QGlobal. On-screen administration, this is where you are going to administer the assessment on the computer screen through any web-enabled device and lock the testing session to prevent the examinee from exiting the assessment. And finally, we have the remote on-screen administration, where you administer the assessment by sending an email with a secure link to the examinee or rater who will then complete the assessment through their own device. To use the manual entry option, the BAS-3 needs to be administered through a pencil, pencil and paper method. And after the administration has been completed, um, then some demographic information and item level responses can be entered into QGlobal. So I'm going to enter some values here. And then save. Now 
now you can see a message that says the assessment record was saved successfully. If you were going to um, and assign a, an on-screen method. Let's go ahead and save and close this. We would then select the on-screen administration and start assessment. Examinees for the student and parent forms can select the assessment to be administered in either English or in Spanish and then utilize the direction buttons at the bottom of the screen to move from page to page. And test instructions are going to be provided on each page to walk the respondent through the test. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here and show you that if an item is not answered, then a missing item notification will be displayed and the respondent will only be able to progress to the next page after all of the items on the current page have a response. And after the assessment has been fully completed, the respondent will be navigated to an assessment completed page. Okay, I'm going to get back into QGlobal. And now let's take a look at assigning a remote on-screen assessment. Okay, we are going to go ahead and select the remote on-screen administration. And here you can enter in the rater's name and their email. Oh. I'll just type this in here. Select the Preview and Send Invitation button. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then we can see that there is an invitation form that we can customize and then send to um, the rater. And they will receive an email with a secure link to access the assessment, which will be active for 30 days. After the VASC3 has been completed, a report will then be generated, or can then be generated. And there are three locations in QGlobal where reports can be generated from the home screen here, the examinee profile, and the assessment details page. From the home screen, I'm going to select report. And then I am going to select the client name for who I want to generate a report. I am going to select the report that I want to configure and then the configure report button. After we make any changes that we like to the configuration page, we're going to select Generate Report. And here we can see a PDF version of the comprehensive report. And this is also available in a Word format. And with that, we conclude our demonstration of the desk on the Q Global platform. And I'm going to go ahead and hand this over. Thanks, Laura. 
Hi, my name is Sydney Herndon, and I am part of the Review 360 implementation team. And I'm going to demonstrate for you today how to administer the best on Review 360. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And right now I am logged in as a district administrator. And the first thing when you are using Review 360 is import again all your students and teachers and classroom assignments. And we have a number of different ways to do that. You can do a user interface import. Um, you can automate your import with um, your IT department. So we have a lot of different options. But once the import is complete, then it's time to schedule the screener. And in Review 360, you can schedule your screener at any time. There are not screening windows, um, and you can screen as often as you would like. Um, this, there's already a screener assigned, but I'll just show you how to do this. I'm on an administrative dashboard, so there's some widgets on the screen that show um, the completion rate for the screener and can help you manage it. And there's also training videos in the training widget that will walk you through the processes that are available to your user functionality. So if, if I go into administration and universal administration, um, you can see that we do already have two assigned, but I can very easily add an additional screener. And so in Review 360, you have access to the teacher form, the parent form, as well as the student form. And so we'll go ahead and just select them all. Um, we always want to share schedule at the highest organizational level. That way we can see district-wide results. So I'm going to click on Next. Then who's going to actually complete the teacher form? And that's typically the teacher, but you could have other um, staff complete the teacher form, as Chris indicated. Um, if you do want to monitor the completion of the parent form or the student form, you can assign that out to users as well. And the student form and the parent form, uh, there is an online portal that you can go to to complete the screener, or there is a paper and pencil option, uh, but unfortunately someone would have to do the data entry um, when you get those paper and pencil options back. So we like the online form. We want to do a start date and then a due date. So we'll leave it open a couple of weeks. We'll name the screener so that you um, know what you're looking at because you can look at historical data. And then there's always a confirmation screen at the end to let you know exactly what you're screening. But I'm going to hit Cancel so we can see we already have two available. And back on the dashboard, we can see that we have a Universal Screener Progress widget. So I can see that for the student form, we do have 18 students who have already been screened. We have 3,000 students that are remaining. Um, for the teacher form, we have 77 students who have been screened, and there are about 3,000 students remaining. And I can very easily see here, too, that 31 teachers have completed the form, two teachers are in progress, and 8 or 1,200 teachers haven't even started. So I can easily go in here and see all of the teachers who have not actually started their screening, and I can send them a reminder email. So management of the screener can be quite um, easy from Review 360. Let me jump over to a teacher login. And so it looks a little bit different than the administrator login. There's not quite as many widgets. Um, and I have an alert here at the top of the page that says I have one universal screening pending. And I can click on this details link to go in and see what I need to do. And the first thing that we have to do is actually select the students that we want to screen. So I have um, five students on my roster. Um, perhaps I don't want to screen all of them. One of the students has left my classroom, or another student is not going to be screened. And I can even add additional students on the fly if I need to do so. Next again, just a confirmation page once again. These are the students that I'm going to screen, and I'm going to click Finish. So now then in my things to do, I'm actually going to complete the form. I have the instructions at the top of the page, the student that I'm going to screen, and then each one of the items. And we're going to go ahead and click through here to screen each student. And I'm going to get really bad data, kind of like Laura and her twos and threes all the way down the page. When I try to 
to move to the next student, if I inadvertently skip something, again, like on QGlobal, you cannot skip anything, I've got to go back and answer the item. Next again, so let me go ahead and do this quickly. And then finally, my third student. You know, after a while, you'll see you can just put the numbers in. Again, I have that confirmation screen. I can always go back in and check what I have um, entered for the student. And then as soon as I hit Submit, then the um, screener goes for scoring, and you can start to see the results. And if I jump back over here to the district administrator page and I refresh my screen, I can actually see now then that 32 teachers are done. The teacher that I just um, was using to complete my screener, uh, that teacher is done now. And I can start to see the results of the screener straight away. We have these big group reports like Chris talked about to see overall how the students are doing. Um, and we can see that the number and percentage of students at the normal risk level, at the elevated risk level, and at the extremely elevated risk level. And if I actually go into the analysis and I go into my reports, I can see that summary data as well. So again, I can see the number of students in each risk category and the percentage. I can see that distribution, the Berry distribution, and I can look at the data by grade level, by gender, by ethnicity, and by school. And I can drill into this information to disaggregate the data even further. So I can see 16% um, you know, three students as compared to 21% in the district average for female students. And I can continue to look at second grade female students as well. All the reports in Review 360 can be exported as a PDF, Excel, or CSV file format. Additionally, we have an analysis where you can look at um, multiple screeners over time, so it becomes a progress monitoring tool. And you can see I've got two administrations here listed. And I see my spring administration, and I see my fall administration, and I can see that a couple of my students, like say Victor here, in the fall administration, he was an extremely elevated risk level. And in the spring administration, he's now at an elevated risk level. So whatever supports we put in place for that student, they are, looks like that they're working. And if I click on the student's name, then I can actually see how um, the respondent, how the teacher scored that student each time. Um, I can see the validity indexes. We have an F index, a consistency index, and a response pattern index, and how those are looking, how good the data is. And then we can also see the overall score like we talked about, and then the sub-index scores. And for the teacher form, it's the externalizing, um, the internalizing, and the adaptive risk index. We can also look at the full report for whichever um, screener administration we want to review. And again, I can see the demographic information for the student, the results, um, and I can look to see how each item was answered as well. And again, we have this analysis of the universal screener in Review 360. And if you do get the opportunity to have multiple people rate or score a student, then when you go into the student, the individual student um, results, then you'll see multiple um, ratings listed here. And on this analysis, the students who are most at risk are going to show up in the list first, so you know that those are the, the students you need to work with. And that is the end of a very quick overview of the vast three best on Review 360. And now I'm going to hand it over to Heather. Okay, thank you, Sydney. And I will have a very quick little demonstration because in Ames Web Plus, 
we have an option for the administering the BASC 3 BES for teacher rating forms, not for parent or student rating forms. But this is just a, a little piece of the pie here. And so if you opt to use it this way, I'll sort of show you how that looks in Ames Web Plus if you're a current user. So just as a quick little synopsis here on how it works in Ames Web Plus, you do need to have an active Ames Web Plus subscription for this to be added onto your account. So it's an add-on feature. And so you'll really sort of decide on about how many screeners you're going to need for the year. And you'll place your order, and then the teachers can complete the rating forms on whoever they need to administer them to. And then, of course, you can get into the analysis of the results and making a plan for those at-risk students. So I am going to go right into the platform here and, and give you a little idea on how this works in Ames Web Plus. So let me just share my screen. Okay, so you should be seeing my screen. And so we would just log into Ames Web Plus. And the account for Ames Web Plus would have already been set up with all of your students that you use the academic measures for. And so you would not have to say, do anything extra for that. And once you do subscribe to the BASC 3 BEST add-on, you would automatically see this option here under your Students tab. So this is where you're going to be going under the Students tab to go and administer assessments and to look at some of the data. Now the BASC 3 BEST is available at a class level or a group level. And so I'm just going to pull up a class here. And right now we can administer these during three different periods of the school year. And we have fall, winter, and spring. So current time period is spring, which is when I would want to select for the current date it is. And you can see that I have a list of my students that are in my class. And a couple of students I've already completed the rating form for. And of course, most of them I have not. So what I would want to do to administer and to complete the rating form, now imagine me being the teacher. I'm logged into my account. I would just go into here and click on to assess. And what it's actually doing is pulling me over into Review 360. So Review 360 is integrated to Ames Web Plus when you purchase the subscription. So that's the reason I decided to go last, is because Sydney probably already has shown you all of this, right? So it doesn't really look any different. It's the exact same platform. It's just that we have a little bit uh, more limited options in Ames Web Plus because it's only the teacher rating form. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in some responses here. And it's going to do the same thing. If I didn't do all of the responses, it's going to give me a little warning that I have to complete all responses. And once I hit Submit, that's all there is to it. And I can just close this window. Now, it takes a few minutes for the scores to be calculated and then synced over to my Ames Web Plus account. But when they do sync over, it's going to just look exactly like this, where we would have our overall index score in the first column. You can see the emotional, I mean, I'm sorry, the externalizing, the internalizing, and the adaptive index scores. And they are color coded based on the risk level. So you can see down here in the legend, we have various risk levels. This is how a lot of the reporting is done in Ames Web Plus. We have little um, risk indicators, and they're color coded. So you can look across a school year, or you can look across a time period, and then you can also go back in time and look at previous results. So in a couple of these examples, we have students that had some more significant needs, more of that elevated risk. Something else that you can do for the reporting is if you wanted to get a group level report through your Ames Web Plus account, just click onto the Export button at the top right and select to get your BASC 3 BEST 
report, and what will happen is it will pop up here into this little notifications area where you can go and download it and then print it out or save it, how, whatever you want to do. So here it is. I'll download it. And we can take a look at what this looks like. So it just puts it in a PDF format. Something else that you can do is you can look at individual student results. So say I would like to look and see how this particular student does in other areas. I can click onto their little icon next to their name. And I don't actually have the academic results for my fourth graders in here, but what it would do, it would, it would put all of the data that you have for the current time period onto one report. So if you had reading and math scores, if you had progress monitoring results, they would show up here. And of course, you can look at your BASC 3 best results in, in um, this screen as well. From this screen, we can jump back over to Review360 and see a few of those other reports like Sydney had shown you. So I'll click on this little pe paper icon. Now remember, that we're just looking at individual student results now. And so you can see that it will give me a little summary, and I can even pull up the full report, and I could print this out if I wanted to in this format. This gets down to that item level. Okay, back to my Aims of Plus account. Just another option here. If you click onto the little printer icon, it's going to automatically download that report that I showed you in the Review360 account. So if you really wanted to just automatically get a printed version, you can certainly go ahead and just access it with that little printer icon. Okay, one final thing that I'll show you here with the results is if you wanted to just go ahead and get some group level data, you can go up to the top area in your bar and click Review 360. And this is going to give you your level of access for overall results. So like if you're in as a manager, you're going to be able to see a very widespread view versus as if you're a classroom teacher, you would just see the students that you work with or that have been assigned to you in your account. Now the way that these licenses work is that you don't actually, say, get charged a license until you use it. So you may have a whole class of students here that have been added to the system. If we go up into the BASC 3 Best screen, oops, let me pull up a current time period. But it's not actually going to charge me a license um, until we get that rating form filled out. And the licenses in as this add-on can be carried over to the following year if we don't use them all up. So sometimes people choose to do like a targeted sort of screening. And so you know, if you collected reading and math data for all these students and you only collected for the screening data for a few of the students, you'd only be charged the license fee for those three or however many students you complete the rating form for. And you can administer these you know, multiple times across the year, and it's only one license used. OK, we do have a nice little help area. Just thought I'd show you this really quick. Down in the right-hand corner, our help screen is connected to the screen that you're in in your Ames Web Plus account, and you can gather more information about the rating forms and the results in this area. So that is about all I have. I'll let Chris fin finish it off. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, all right. Um, thank you, uh, Heather. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you, Laura, for uh, your excellent presentations on the different platforms. Um, I believe this is at the end of the uh, we're at the end of our presentation, so if you have any um, questions um, or if you uh, need any other information or support, you can see on the screen some of the product page uh, links. Um, they are, will be uh, on the handout, um, which um, Sherry uh, should have sent out during the top of the hour, 
And if not, I believe she'll send it after the uh, presentation. Um, I'm just looking to see if there's uh, any questions uh, coming up uh, that we can answer. Um, all right. Um, if not, I want to thank you all for um, uh, joining us this afternoon. Um, okay, just real quick, there's one. Here's a quick question. Is there any cost benefit of using Ames Web Plus for teacher ratings and Review 360 for student and parent ratings? Um, Sydney or Heather, do you? I would. Um, want oh, to? go ahead, Sydney. I thought you have a better. Uh. <laughs> um, this is Sydney. I don't know that there's a cost benefit. Um, on Ames Web Plus, you'll have screening windows, you know, that align to the academic screenings for the. You, know, you, you would use the teacher form. Um, you know, the 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 hard thing if you use the different forms on different platforms, you're not going to have a, a good overall um, view of how your students are doing because even though um, Ames Web Plus goes into Review 360, they, they're not necessarily all interlinked together. So if you use the teacher form via Ames Web Plus and you use the student and the parent form via Review 360, you're going to have separate data. Okay, somebody asked a question okay. here is if you could get a parent and teacher form with Ames Web Plus and the answer is no, not at this time. It's something that's being considered, but Review 360 would be, or, or Q Global, of course, would be sort of the direction to go if you'd like to use the parent and the, and the student rating forms. All right, uh, here's one more question. Um, we have a large district. Uh, can we roll out the universal screener by grade or target a population like our alternative school? They already use Review 360. You you can do a grade. Um, however, we we kind of jokingly say you we do put the universal and universal screening in review 360. You can do that um, because when you when you select the form that you're going to use, you'll select the grade level. So you could do it as a grade. Um, if you're doing it with an alternative population, you may have to manipulate your import a little bit. But talk to your implementation specialist if you already use review 360, and they can discuss how you can do that. All right, and here's one for Heather. Can you uh, assess multiple times per year with the Ames Web Plus? Does it produce a graph to show your progress over time? Uh, yes, you could administer it. We have the screening period between fall, winter, and spring, so you could do that. If you uh, only screen once or you screen every time or every time period, it's going to be the same cost. The report that you would want to go to if you're wanting to look across time would be go to go to the student's profile screen where you can look at it really puts it out nicely from fall to winter to spring so you can see it right in one little area so you don't have to be jumping around in the platform all right and then we have a question about can you talk a bit about the progress monitoring tools and how often uh, they can be given. Um, yeah, I can take this one. Um, you can use the use the BAS as a progress monitoring tool as often as you want um, in the in the in each of the systems. Uh, you know, usually it is preferable to do uh, a benchmarking at the beginning of the year um, to uh, then um, do a an administration usually at the middle of the in the middle of the year and then maybe at the end of the year. Um, but the benchmarking can also be used, or not benchmarking, I'm sorry, the progress monitoring can also be used if you are using specific interventions with your students, if you're using class-wide type interventions and you want to um, assess if uh, those interventions are um, provide are, are producing positive results. So you could uh, also um, use it to monitor progress throughout the year. Um, 
Okay. Um, see it. I was going to answer a question here about the progress monitoring between benchmarks on AIMS of Plus, and I think um, what the question is is can you can you maybe do this say like in atypical times of the year that you you know you usually for AIMS of Plus data you would collect your data maybe in September and then again in January and then again in May, but could you administer in between? And certainly our calendar or windows are open continually throughout the school year. So if you wanted to collect three data points, fall is anywhere between August 1st to November 30th, and then winter is from December 1st to March 15th, and then spring is from March 16th through July 31st. So you, you would just um, pick a time in between there. And then we have a, a quick question. Can uh, instructional aides in the classroom uh, also administer the assessments? And I think I, I said at the beginning, uh, oh, go ahead. Well, I was, I was just, it didn't say what platform we're referring to here. Okay. Um, I do know for the best itself, uh, you know, it, it is suggested um, that, um, you know, or it, it is a level B uh, assessment. So it suggested that um, anyone who is going to um, use the measure, um, you know, uh, be familiar with the measure. Um, so uh, if you were to provide instruction to those instructional aides at the classroom level that you, you could use the best. And for AIMS of Plus, you could have instructional aides complete the rating forms, but you do need to have them added to your AIMS of Plus account, and they would have to have access to the classes that the students are assigned to. So um, that would just be and that, what you need to set up. And that would be the same in Review 360, yeah. Okay. All um, right. Um, goodness, lots of questions. <laughs> Sure, sure. We're trying to get to <laughs> Thank you for the very good questions. Uh, we're at the bottom uh, of the half hour, um, so we're at the end of the presentation. We'll try to follow up and answer any of the questions that we weren't able to answer um, uh, through email. Um, again, I really appreciate you all coming out and um, attending our webinar today, and I hope uh, that you found it uh, helpful. Uh, I want to thank you all, and uh, you all have a nice day.